everyone, welcome to today's video. We are doing another glowy, dewy, healthy skin look. This time we're doing it all with Western products and we're going for a slightly more bronzed up Western look. If you wanna see my other healthy skin video, that's a Korean product video, which embraces slightly more of the paler, less bronzy Korean trend. Okay, let's jump straight in. So I'm gonna start with MAC Strobe Cream. This is the shade Peach Light. I would be careful putting this on the center of the face if you're someone who gets oily because it is pretty intense. As for me, I'm pretty dry, so I could kind of get away with it. No more on the chin there. It's my oiliest part, the chin. This is the Ryor Mattifying Moisturizer and I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of this on the chin around the nose where I get a little bit of oil and a tiny bit up between the eyebrows just to help things not get too dewy. Now whilst I'm usually a sponge kind of a girl for today's makeup I'm going to be using a brush because I'm using the even better glow foundation and this is just a very very liquidy foundation and if you try and use a sponge sponge like this it will just absorb most of the product so a brush is the way to go and I'm going to use one from Real Techniques this is the expert face brush and I'm just using little strokes pats and circular motions to blend this out I'm starting where I want the most coverage and then blending out towards the edge of the face where I don't want quite as much So I want coverage here on my cheeks, this is where I get red. But then out towards the jawline, I just use the remainder of what's on the brush there and bring that out. Now, once this is applied and it's dried down a little bit, if there are some brush strokes that you can't get rid of, you can go over with a sponge. It's just a good idea with this foundation to wait until it's dried down a bit because it is so liquidy and you don't want to lose it all into the sponge. Now this is a lovely, lovely foundation. It does dry down, it doesn't stay super, super wet. Like it's definitely a more hydrating formula than the other two even better formulas. But it does have a certain amount of dry down to it, which means it doesn't stay really, really wet and sticky on the face. So I will use some powder, but I'm not gonna have to use a lot. I give it some time. That's actually pretty good advice with foundation if you don't know how your foundation is going to wear down it's a good idea to just wait a little bit before you go in with your powder because you never know it might set down a bit by itself and you might need to not apply as much powder as you thought and that's always a good thing because it stops things getting dry and cakey the nose is one of the hardest places to avoid getting brush strokes in my opinion just because it's like so many different angles and shapes and surfaces, but you can always go over with a sponge at the end. Make sure everything's blended. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more on the cheeks where I get some redness. It's gonna plop that on with slightly more dabby types of motions because I don't wanna spread it too far. Don't wanna have an unblended bit back here. Okay, for some, cause, for some concealer, we're going to use classic, the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. I wish they'd make this in a slightly different packaging, but can't have everything we want in life, can we? I'm losing my voice, guys. I might end up very, very croaky in this video. I am going to use um, a sponge now for the concealer. Oh, I'm so croaky. I don't know why. Maybe it's just lack of practice of speaking from not going out and about and being in the world and seeing people. I want a little bit on my chin actually. Okay, that is enough coverage for this everyday healthy skin kind of look. I don't wanna to go too crazy because we want it to look natural, at least natural-ish. So highlight, I am gonna use some cream stick highlight. This is the Kiko Radiant Touch. 
got a little brush hair stuck to it. And I really like this concealer, mostly because... Concealer? I really like this highlight because it has a pale gold colour and pink highlights don't suit me. Now, I never go in with a stick highlight on my face like this. Boom, you get a stripe, you get too much product sometimes, you disturb the foundation. So what I do is completely just massage my brush into the concealer. Concealer, I'm doing it again, I don't know what's wrong with me. Into <laughs> the stick highlight so you can see. My brush there is now reasonably well coated and then I go in with my brush and I find this is a much much easier way of working with stick highlight formulas you don't have to deal with blending out that stripe you don't have to deal with it ruining your foundation you can see all the little hairs on my face when I put on um, stick concealer like this but never mind everyone has hairs on their face right it's just embrace it. I don't think it's something we should feel self-conscious about because it's like people's faces have little baby hairs on them and that's just the way it is. Like I shaved it off once and I decided it was way too much effort and I didn't want to do it again. Also around my eyebrows where I'd taken off the hair above my brow with the little devaflaming razory thing. My hair in grew when it came back which was not attractive or comfortable so i decided that it's not worth doing the whole face shaving hair removal thing i also used to bleach my upper lip hair because i was self-conscious about it but then i got a bit older and realized that it's actually not that dark or that noticeable and the bleach, I have dry skin, so bleaching my um, moustache used to make the skin really dry there and then make it would apply badly for a while afterwards because it was so dry. So again, I just gave up on all of that stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with doing all that stuff if you want. But I don't want to. Moving on, I'm going to use another stick product. This is a blush. This is from Clinique. It's their Chubby Stick Blush. I need to make sure I'm saying the right words like blush and not brush, because I always get those either, like, the wrong way around. Um, so I'm going to use the same brush I just used for my highlight, and I'm going to take some off on the back of my hand, because it's always a good idea to just take something on the back of your hand when you're not quite sure how pigmented it's going to be, because sometimes you can get an unpleasant surprise on your face, <laughs> and then there's nothing you can really do about it apart from try and put more concealer or foundation on. Now I'm doing my usual thing with my blush, blah, 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 blush where I apply it quite diffusely and I'm taking it all the way around up onto the brow because I want a natural sun-kissed kind of glow because that's what natural sun-kissed skin looks like. It doesn't look like a perfect bronze, not on me anyway. I think if you're fair, it's good to add a little bit of pinkish, reddish tone into your like naturally bronzing areas just so that it looks natural because if you have a skin tone like mine, you, you do go a little bit more red. Push those baby hairs back down onto my face. Okay, I am gonna use a tiny bit of contour I'm going to bring back the blush, brush, told you I do this, brush I used for my foundation. This is the Beauty Pie Quick Colour Contour Super Gel and it comes in a little squeezy packet. You have to switch this to the on position so that you can squeeze out product. And then I'm just going to apply a little bit of this. And I know it looks quite pigmented, but it actually blends out really naturally so don't panic i haven't gone crazy so just buff this back into the hairline here blend it in Blend that all the way around. I'm going to join it all up. 
the sides of my face here. Blend it back into my hair a bit. I just washed my hair and now I'm putting makeup in it, so I'm gonna probably have to wash it again tomorrow, but never mind. So, bronzed up now. Take a little bit of the excess on my nose, down onto the cheeks, just blend that all in. This is around the jaw. And to just add a little bit of bronziness to the lower face because this is a sort of medium colour. It's not like a super cool contour colour. And it's not a super bronzy bronzer colour. It's just a really nice hybrid. So that everything looks similar in colour. And you can see this just blends out super easily. This is like a foolproof formula contour, in my opinion. Okay, put that back to the off position so I can't squeeze out product accidentally. And I think we are done with all of our cream products. So, check, check, check. We can move on to powders. I realized the other day when I was editing video that my powder often kind of lightens over the top of my like contour and blush like a little bit more than I kind of want it to like it covers it up a tiny bit so I'm actually going to set my like bronzer and contour with other powders before I go in with the loose powder so I'm going to take a small setting brush and this is the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder Light gonna dip my brush in very carefully, tap this off and then just use this to set down my contour a bit here. Just be careful if you are going in with a pigmented powder product before setting the area that you're talking about on your face with a translucent powder is you really need to tap off your brush because if there is any unevenness in terms of where the powder, where the pigment is lying on your brush and you apply that to your face and your face is still sticky because you haven't done any translucent or loose translucent or set, loose or pressed translucent or skin tone setting powder, if you haven't done that yet and so your face is still tacky and you go in with a pigmented product if you have too much on your brush or the coverage on your brush is uneven you will get that on your face so make sure your brush is evenly coated all the way over so i'm gonna so like i'm tapping like all four sides of the brush in and then i'm knocking it off again to just try and make sure it's even and i'm not gonna get a blob of something where i don't want it put a little bit of this on my nose Chin. I'm gonna try a product that I haven't used before, which is probably a bad idea, but I'm very excited because I finally got my hands on one of these. Not that it was hard to get my hands on it, I just haven't been doing much shopping recently. And this is the Revlon Skin Lights um, Prismatic Bronzer. So again, I'm tapping it evenly. And this is a product I've never used before. I don't know how pigmented it is, so I'm definitely gonna tap the brush off and just go in gently because I can always build it up. So I'm going to use this to set around the top edges of my face. Okay, it's not it's not too crazy pigmented. I'm safe. I'm safe. Okay, so I'll put more on the brush. Tap it off. Flick, 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 flick. When I'm trying to do like a natural, just dispersed bronzer, I like to hold my brush right at the end and sort of flick it about and just gently touch the skin with it. And I find that gives you a nice dispersed look. I'm gonna take this down onto the cheeks a bit. Nose. Now we can move on to the translucent setting powder. So I'm just getting rid of all of these little creases of concealer with my ring finger. You don't want to set the creases in because then they'll just be stuck there forever. Now I'm someone who gets a little bit of bunching up in my 
smile lines because I have quite deep smile lines and I have watched so many videos that are like the fix for this, the fix for this, the fix for this and they're all like these different techniques of trying to fix so that your makeup doesn't crease in your smile lines and of all the videos I've watched have any of them actually worked for me? No they have not. I have my own technique for dealing with smile lines and that is simply that the product cannot crease up there if there is not much product there and the only thing I've actually found effective in terms of avoiding creasing in my smile lines is to make sure there just isn't a load of foundation there. So what I do is I take a little tiny concealer brush like this, completely clean, smile, and I'm just taking excess product out of those smile lines. And then all you need to do is take your sponge, Thump, thump, thump over so that there's no noticeable edges where you took away the product. Now there's very minimal, minimal product actually in those smile lines and so I'm not going to get as much creasing because there's just not product to crease there. That, that honestly is the only solution I've found. It maybe is not what people want, like, you know, if you're wearing full coverage foundation it doesn't work so well as if you were wearing something more natural but it honestly is the only thing that i've ever found that actually actually works so i'm going to take a clean small brush i have like three of these because these are really good and i'm going to use my gosh hyaluronic acid prime and set powder this is my favorite loose setting powder i'm just gonna tap off my brush because i don't want a ton of powder because i want to keep this looking natural healthy glowy that's the point of the video i've tried to keep it away from where i've got this highlight i'm not putting any setting powder over this highlight i actually find that the kiko um, highlighter stick it does dry down a little bit so it's not staying like super sticky it's not oily or greasy so you don't have to worry about that so unless you have like oily oily skin or you just really hate anything being even remotely remotely not set then you can just leave it I'm gonna make sure I set just here because when I put my eyeshadow on and I blend it I don't want it to like blend weird or go patchy so I just really want to make sure that this area around the eye is set I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a powder at a time and then build up a little bit extra if necessary because I don't want to look super powdery and I am going to use a setting spray at the end to get rid of any lasting powder effect like because there are obviously places that I do need to set and a setting spray will help take down that powdery um, look. Not that this I think looks particularly powdery, I think this powder looks pretty nice, like it looks quite soft. As long as you don't apply too much, obviously. Powdering those smile lines, of course, because they still need setting, even though we took a lot of the product out. And I'm just carefully blending the edges here because I don't want it to be like there's a set powdered matte line and then a highlighty, shiny area. So I'm just with very little left on the blush, br blush, brush, oh my god, fanning over that line so that there isn't a distinct join. So now I'm going to go in with some setting spray and this is the Fresh Glow from Beauty Pie. I really like this setting spray, I'm just going to cover up my hair because I don't want to get this in my hair because it makes my hair a bit greasy. Um, and this has a really nice mister to start with, but it also like genuinely makes my makeup last longer. Oh. I'm back, I have my eye makeup done, my brow gel in, my mascara on, and if you want to see how I got this eye look, I'll be uploading a video soon, all of different green eye shadow looks. But now, lips. So I'm going to keep the nip nips <laughs> not nips lips a natural kind of pinkish nude color to complement the skin and to not take any focus away from the eyes because we've got enough going on up here 
So I'm going to use this Helen E Cosmetics stick. This is their lip crayon in the shade Raspberry Crush. And I'm going to fill in all of the lips with this, just as a base of the gloss that I'm going to put on top. And if you're wondering, these sticks are somewhere in consistency between a creamy lip liner and a matte lipstick. They're sort of a hybrid product that you can use all over the lips or just around the outside. They are a little bit less precise, obviously, than a normal lip liner because they are quite chunky, but you can sharpen them. Okay, gloss. This is the Wonder Gloss from Beauty Pie in the shade Apricotta. And this is just a very nude, neutral, sheer gel oil formula gloss. These are very hydrating, very nourishing. You could just use a gloss if you naturally like the shape of your lips. I always use a lip liner because I like to overline my top lip slightly because it's thinner than my bottom lip. Talking whilst putting on gloss is basically impossible, just bear with me. <laughs> okay, so with our makeup all done, I can take my hair down just to show off the final look a little bit better. And here we are. And it's good to do a final check because I usually find that when I've had my hair back with a hairband, I don't have my bronzer blended into my hairline quite as much as I would like it to be. So usually at this point, I take a little bit of extra bronzer, put that on my brush. I'm just gonna pop this into my hairline a little bit more. So it's not quite so white looking. Okay, and we are finished. And that is my glossy, healthy, dewy skin look or with Western products. It's a little bit more bronzy, a little bit more summery, a little bit less subtle than my Korean version because with my Korean product dedicated dewy healthy skin version I tried to follow slightly more of a Korean trend as opposed to a western trend so it's a little less bronzy a little bit more subtle and pale and natural whereas this is a little bit more summery glowy bronzy very glossy but still not like heavy cakey not like super obvious like contour it's still like in my opinion relatively natural the foundation base obviously is reasonably light it still looks like you can see my skin you can see my little freckles and various things going on um yeah so i hope you enjoyed this video if you're interested in more skin focused looks like i said i have a korean healthy glowing skin video and then i have my no makeup makeup video which i warn you still has like quite a lot of products in it. It's definitely a makeup look. It's not like a minimal makeup product look. It's definitely like still got all of the products going on. It's just like the techniques of applying them so that they look really, really subtle and skin-like and natural. And then I also have an actual minimal makeup products video for people who are beginners and who don't own a ton of makeup. Um, okay, I think that's everything. I hope you're having a lovely day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.